Hi, this is Shahab with Amazon Web Services. In this section, we are going to take a look at how to use Amazon Simple Cloud Storage Service or S3 in your .NET application. Let's take a look at some characteristics of Amazon S3. Amazon S3 is a highly secure, durable, and scalable object storage. An object can be of any kind, such as text, video, photo, or another binary format. Amazon S3 uses buckets to keep the data. The bucket name must be unique across Amazon S3. Also, a bucket is associated with a region. When you want to choose a region, you should consider factors such as latency, cost, and regulatory requirements. Also, there is a caveat. Buckets that have a period in the bucket name can cause certificate exceptions when accessed with HTTP-based URLs. Now let's take a look at S3 objects. An object is identified by a unique key. You must specify an object key to upload and retrieve it. An object key is encoded using UTF-A encoding. And the key has a maximum length of 1,024 bytes. Also, you can use alphanumeric characters and some special characters, such as forward or slash, in the naming. An object is associated with system-defined metadata and user-defined metadata. System-defined metadata includes information such as object creation date, size, and MD5 digest. Now let's take a look at some key points. All objects and buckets are private by default. Pre-signed URLs are useful if you want your user to be able to upload a specific object to your bucket without being required to have AWS security credentials or permissions. Also, SSL encrypted endpoints are supported so you can encrypt the data at transition. For the data at rest, you can use client-side and server-side encryption. Amazon S3 encrypts your data at the object level as it writes it to disk in its data centers and decrypts it for you when you access it. Before switching to the demo, let's take a look at some operations on objects that S3 supports. There's a full list of APIs that you can find at the URL at the bottom of the screen. As an example, S3 supports put, get, delete, and restore operations. You can upload or copy objects up to 5 gigabytes in a single put operation. For larger objects up to 5 terabytes, you must use the multi-part upload API and you should consider using multi-part upload for objects bigger than 100 megabytes. Also, you can retrieve the whole objects or part of it using a get operation. And using delete, you can delete one or more objects. Now let's take a look at how to use the S3 APIs in a .NET application using Visual Studio. In your Microsoft Visual Studio, you should be able to see the Amazon S3 tab in the AWS Explorer window. You can expand it and you can see the list of buckets you already have created in your account. You can also right click and create a new bucket. Let me show you how to use Amazon S3 APIs in a .NET application. For this purpose, go to File, New, Project. Under Visual C Sharp, AWS Samples, Storage, you should be able, couple of, be able to see a couple of examples for Amazon S3. Let's click on AWS S3 sample to get us started with. Let's create OK. And in this screen, you can choose the, the profile and the region that your application is going to use. Click OK. Under the dependencies, under NuGet packages, you should be able to see AWS SDK.S3. If you have a new project and you are working on a new code, you can always right click on dependencies, manage NuGet packages, and find AWS SDK.S3 and click on it and install it. In this window, since it's already installed, I can either uninstall or update it. Let's close this one and go to program.cs, which is the start point of our console application. In the program.cs, as you can see, it's using Amazon.S3 and Amazon.S3.model libraries. These are the two main libraries that you need to use when you are dealing with S3. In order to use the S3 APIs, 
the first thing you need to do is to use a client. This client should be of type Amazon S3 client. In this demo, what we are going to do, we are going to list bu current buckets that I have, create a new bucket, write an object to a bucket, reading an object, deleting an object, and list the objects at the end. Let's take a look at how listing buckets works. Click on it and go to implementation. To list the buckets, you need to call the list buckets operation on the client and the response will have a list of buckets and you can actually go through them and in this scenario we can write the, the bucket names. Also in the response of a every APA call to S3 you can catch the Amazon S3 exception that can tell you hey if there is invalid access key or security or if there is another kind of error. Let's see how to actually create a bucket now. In order to create a bucket, what you need to do, you need a create bucket request or put bucket request. In the put bucket request, the only thing you need to provide is a bucket name. This bucket name should be a unique, bu a unique bu bucket name. For the purpose of this application, we need to send this bucket name. Let me actually create a new bucket name and call it aws.net learning pass bucket one and I need to also cr uh, create a key name as well and for that key name I will just call it key one so we saw how to create a bucket Let's go to the next step and let's try to write an object to the bucket. Let's go to implementation. To write an object into a bucket, you need to have a put object request. In the put object request, you need to provide a content body, a bucket name, and a key name. The bucket name and key name are what I described above. After that, you can call the put object on the client and pass the request and you can upload this object to the bucket in your S3 account. Now let's take a quick look at the next step, which is reading an object. To read an object from S3, you need to provide a get object request. The request should have a bucket name and key name. After you have created the request, you can call the get object on the request for the client and get the response. As mentioned before, you can always like catch the exception that can be very descriptive to you and tell you if there is any issue. At the end, we will delete the object and then list the existing objects. So let's take a look at how to delete an object. Let's go to implementation. To delete an object from S3, you actually need to create a delete object request, which has a bucket name and key name. And the only thing you need to do is call the delete object operation on the request. And let's list the current objects. Right click, go to implementation. To list all the objects, you just need to provide the bucket name for the list object requests. And then you can call this request, you can pass it to list objects uh, call and this request as an argument to that and call it for the client. The response will have the list of objects that in this scenario we are just printing to the console. So this is how you can use the S3 APIs in uh, your .NET application. Let's run it and see what happens. It lists all the buckets. These are the buckets that I had previously. Now it created a bucket, write an object, read it the object. The object's title is the title. This is what we set in the code. Then it deletes the object 
and lists all the objects, which means nothing is left. So I just did show you how to use the S3 APIs using a .NET application in your Visual Studio. If you need more examples, for example, on the transfer utility, you can always go to File, New, Project, and under Visual C Sharp, AWS Sample, and Storage, you can find more examples, including the transfer utility. In this video, we went over how to use Amazon S3 in your .NET application. Thanks for watching.